College Survival 101, Episode 3, Study Hacks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of College Survival 101. I'm your host, Chen Yi. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about study hacks. Well, I can say that this episode is probably one of the highlighted topics in this series, since, well, most of my audience are, like, university students, if not then high school students, and all of us, if not then most of us, are concerned about how to study using the right methods and get good results to make a simple piece of paper look good. Yet we may struggle in the process of exam preparation, so it's time to gear up with some study hacks that you never knew may help you one day. And with that, let us welcome our guest for today's episode, Sujing. Hi guys, nice to meet you all. Hi Sujing, so uh, please introduce yourself. Yep, sure. So my name, my full name is Lim Sujing, and right now I'm an A-level student studying at College of SNU. It's a college, it's a residential college located in Namba Berenin. Right now I'm on my final sem, so I'm graduating this June. Cool. All right, so... So Jing, let's just delve into this topic right away, shall we? Yep, let's go. So, speaking about study hacks, I think, well, could you recall any of your friends or anyone in particular, like, in your campus who always gets, like, good grades? Do you remember any of their methods in studying somehow? Well, in fact, if you realize, because I'm living in a residential college, right, so I guess Mm -hmm. those people who study this a lot like we call them nerds hmm. they are, they're usually just studying in their chalet they're doing chalet up. but I, I believe right um those people they have their techniques in studying so some of them they already figure out uh, what's the best way of them studying some of them they are better at visual so they would might they'll just draw some notes i mean some graphs write some notes so that they can grasp the concept easily some of them are they are great at listening someone that i'm quite admire and yeah those people will just use uh, recording to help them out so this i believe everyone has different method because you see we are all as are, are humans right so things mm-hmm. are quite different so i guess depends on your ability that is various method for you to uh, study effectively see cool so on my side actually i have a friend well when she studies she's technically pretty emotionally sensitive when she studies so she prefers a completely quiet environment like if anyone starts to disturb her she will probably go insane yeah other than that other than that it's just uh cool for her you can just chill and have fun with her but other than that during study times it's probably the period of time that you mostly do not want to disturb her well actually Sijing, I don't know if you realized it or not, but for most students, according to my own observation, their so-called default study technique is just to memorize. As if you like you recall every content in the textbook or the material that you're studying, you basically like know everything. I don't know if you have friends who do exactly like that, but I think that is a sort of a loophole or a bug in studying because if you memorize it, you may or may not remember it. And sometimes you just, when you finish your exam and you forget all of them and the cycle repeats. What do you think? Well, honestly, the statistics in SPM actually show us that there's quite a lot of people who like on memorizing. But you see, memorizing works quite well on some subjects like history. Or mm-hmm. Sajara, or sometimes with uh, Pandega Moro. So these are the subjects that work quite well on memorizing. That's why you see people getting good grades for that, right? Mm. But however, right, memorizing techniques kills people when it comes to logical subjects like MS, mathematics, mm. physics. All of this require a deep understanding of your concept. So right now, right, I guess, um, because Malaysia is kind of um exam-based education system. After all, the government reform, try to reform this, but in the end, SPPM is something, I mean, SPM is something that matters, right? Yeah. So I guess memorizing is quite prevalent at, you know, nowadays. But for me, right, <coughs> I'm a guy who is quite lazy in a sense because I don't really like to memorize things. I mean, I'm just, 
I, I hate sejarah, you know, that time. Yeah. I need to read just two textbooks. Damn, that's a lot. So for me, right, I usually try to understand the story about that. It's like, you know, sometimes um, you, let's say you talk about uh, any toko or any like, you know, let's say Tunggatu Rama, why he choose to do this. There's logic behind the person. So eventually I go and understand the logic about uh, for that one. So for me, um, I guess all everything that happens everything in that study has a sequence behind it. Whether you discover it or not, it's up to you. But I guess if you memorize those sequence instead of that individual things, then it should be much, much easier. See, cool. Well, on my point of view, like in my own personal opinion, I actually, I'm quite similar to you, Sijing. I don't really like memorizing. Instead, I would try to understand it, understand the concept or the theory behind all those stuff. I do not really like to memorize things because I feel like um, I really like to learn. So I would like to try to understand it first before I try to remember them. Yeah, I don't really like to just oh i see one material and then i read line by line and just memorize everything mm. i mean it works for some subjects as you mentioned history that i could not possibly help any help anything with it because it's like <laughs> a story and some details are very crucial if you do not write the exact words so memorizing is crucial but other than that because i'm taking business subjects like economics business these subjects require a lot of understanding before you try to memorize them if not it's like technically pointless in learning these mm. subjects yeah because there's a lot going on and sometimes everything depends so when you understand the theory you can basically apply to any situation rather than you just memorize one case study and you only remember that case study without understanding the concept behind it yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's the difference between SPM and theory studies because most of the questions are designed in a way that tests your concept. So mm. your concept is not strong. One question would be enough to drag you off, you see. Right. Yeah. Well, this is like the loophole of memorizing. Like sometimes it is efficient for certain subjects, but mostly it's inefficient if you only apply this skill of memorizing instead of anything else. But there's also another conventional impression in terms of studying, in which I mentioned it in the very first episode of this podcast series in time management, which is about studying longer hours equals getting good grades. I think it's only like half of it is true. It doesn't guarantee you a good grade. And the more I think of it, after even after progressing into pre-U or university as of now, the entire study game or the study battleground is about who studies using lesser amount of time and still gets good grades because it's about productivity and efficiency as a university student or a college student. At least that's what I think. How about you, Suji? Do you have any opinions to, uh, that you want to share about this? Well, I guess mine is pretty in line with yours. You mm. see, right? Um, I, if you learn economics, which I guess you do, mm. you will learn about a production curve. You're not mistaken with that. And yeah. the production curve works like, a, you know, an X cube graph where uh, you have an increasing gradient up to a point, then the gradient will stop increase and start to get decreased. And then eventually the whole graph will reach a maximum point. After mm. that, beyond that, it will, it will fall, right? Yeah, so diminishing that, returns. Mm, yeah, so that's actually, like mentioned, um, it's just not in economics, it's actually everywhere. So the mm. same goes to studies. Eventually, right, I would say studying uh, effectiveness, it's something, it's a multiplication function. So mm. it is the, out, the times, the time that you invested in your, into your studies, times the effectiveness of your study. So right here, I say that it's a multiplication function. So if you don't invest enough time, then you won't get a good grade. So you need to make sure that your, your time is quite sufficient. And then the other one, it's about the efficiency. Apparently this efficiency is another function of your 
uh, I mean your study hours, right? Like mm-hmm. you know, sometimes that you you are quite efficient. There sometimes that you're not. So if you got too excessive, then the efficiency will go down. So I would say this is actually a function uh, for that. Well, I guess after all, most of us know that we need to study, uh, like even some of, some of our time to study, right? So I guess some people don't realize it's about the efficiency. One thing about how I study, a lot of juniors asked me before. Like, you know, those who are one year younger than me, they say, oh, you got like quite a lot of good grades. How do you study? I was like, huh, um, well, yeah, you just study. <laughs> yeah, you just study. I mean, um, there are some different things or different subjects, but in general, I just spam all the past papers and I just make sure that, you know, like I, when I feel like doing it, then I'll just do it. Then I just make sure I got enough sleep. I do sports. Then mm-hmm. I play some games. In fact, I tell you one one day before the exam, like the real exam, we are playing PUBG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is one one important thing. Your study schedule should be consistent. It, you shouldn't like, you know, like suddenly uh, you are like, you want to quit Instagram just for studies, those quick WhatsApp and, or whatever social media that you have just for studies, right? So this is proven to be very ineffective. And I saw a lot of students that did that and then they end up uh, not getting a good result and then suddenly they post some of the emo posts in their <laughs> Emo posts. <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe you didn't realize that, but if you have a chance to talk to you, then I will tell you that. <laughs> so okay. I'll see. All right. Well, productivity and efficiency is one thing when it comes to studying, especially when you progress into university. Like, the environment of studying in back in high school in university is totally different. So some of our old methods might not be applicable when it comes to university. And that's where productivity and efficiency comes in. Yeah. So mm-hmm. aside from productivity and efficiency and our study techniques, I think motivation in studying is also an important factor in improving that. I've seen and heard lots of like point of view is that they just have zero motivation in studying. They they know that it's important to study, but they do not have the driving force in them to study. Well, for my case, I think my own willpower of knowing that I need to work hard for myself, for my own future, and my parents who raised me, it truly drives me to strive and put in my efforts. So I seldom feel unmotivated to study when I just try to think about the purpose of my education. So um, what's in it for you, Sijing? Actually, yeah, I, I do realize a lot of people like having problem to understand and get the motivation of studying. Mm. I mean, that is quite common, but it's very justified. A lot of people, right, like, they know study is important, but then, right, it's something that they, they, are, they are yet to experience. Mm. You know, let's say um, you have parents, you know, Asian parents, they always keep telling, oh, you know, if you don't study, then you won't get a good job, and you end up uh, losing all the money, don't even get money, in, cannot live a good life, and blah, 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 and then everything go on, goes on. So, yeah, this, about this, right, a lot of youngsters like us, especially Gen Zs and students, right, who are yet to experience the adult life. We do understand like, okay, what what is it like when you don't have money? We know the concept, but we haven't experienced it. So this is one important point, why people don't get motivation to study. Also, right, right now, um, I guess because of uh, human civilization development, studies mm-hmm. have been quite, I mean, quite away from our real life education. Imagine mm-hmm. like you, you just imagine you are an average student, and then you are learning in an MS class, you are learning calculus, you know, differentiate by first principle, blah, 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 and so on. And then you think like, okay, am I going to go into the pasta? And then I saw the price, am I going to differentiate? Is the price going to be displayed in five acts? And then you're going to differentiate. <laughs> That's not going no. to be the case, right? Yeah. So, uh, it is something that is quite disconnected from our real life, which actually makes us feel like, you know, how am I going to start doing something like that? Moreover, there's like um, social medias saying that, oh, actually you don't need to go, go to college, you earn a lot of money. So this is something that is, <laughs> you know, convinced more, giving more reasons for me not to study. Yeah, mm. so this is the reason why pe- some people don't get the motivation. Actually, motivation is very, very important. When you don't have a motivation, right, it's a proportionate function to efficiency. I mean, I myself, I also feel it. You know, sometimes uh, like after lunch, you feel like lazy, right? Yeah, you don't feel like doing anything. And then by the time, if you force yourself to study, right, eventually you're gonna like, you know, 
stare at the paper for like I think 15 minutes and then realize that after 15 minutes you would just wrote one line of sentence you know whatever mm. things so um it's quite important for you to get motivation if sometimes you lost motivation like me I would just ask my um roommate to say you know what just get online on PUBG after two games <laughs> you get motivation you go and study so yeah. this is how I get in my own motivation now but other than that I just want to mention a bit of my background because I'm a sponsored student, so oh, there would, okay. yeah, there would be a minimum requirement for me. So I guess that's one of the hard motivation for me. If I don't do it, I die. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Mm. Actually, same here because I'm also maintaining a scholarship. So that's actually the most minimum requirement that I need to, you know do to achieve it in order to maintain my spot uh scholarship so i need to have motivation to study that's the basic point mm, yeah. but other than that um without placing the scholarship on my highest priority i put myself in first i think about myself a lot i care a lot about, i care a lot for my future so as of for now there's nothing much i can do so education is my best possible pathway to take and the most budget one actually so i think that is the reason why i am motivated to study but for others um their source of motivation might vary according to different backgrounds and different individuals but it works just as the same if you found out the purpose of your education and you sort it out somehow in any shape or form just to study and just go for the best i think that is quite important in studying if not then you're just particular uh in particular you're just directionless you don't know where to go you're just studying and then after you study you don't know where to go hmm. yeah then you will be like oh then i'll continue studying and then you don't know what to study for. I think this is quite pointless as well. If you yeah. don't have that kind of motivation mm. to push you forward. Yeah, after all, it is still about our journey, right? If yeah. we don't realize the importance of our journey, it's just like economics information theory. <laughs> I can't, again. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if you don't realize it, then you probably won't understand why I even study. I think that happens to a lot of people nowadays. Mm. Mm. True. I think it's a great chance for us to raise that kind of awareness to all university students and high school students out there who are currently listening to my podcast so yeah you get what i mean all right so moving on this is the final part of the podcast so, Jing, so do you have anything to share on your personal study techniques or any other hacks that you wish to share actually right um i remember that's a dream Hmm. He is so nerd up to the point that I got shocked. It widened my horizons so badly. I was like, whoa, that's a next level of nerd, you know? <laughs> but you see, I look, I look at his face, right? I, he didn't tell me anything, but I look at his face, I can kind of, kind of tell that this guy is depressed. You know, he skipped oh. a lot of college events just for study and blah, blah, blah. But, but that's the other topic. So I guess, right, this guy, um, I can tell that he studied a lot, but... He, I don't think he's in, uh, having a very effective study method. So for me, right, I just want to share about a technique that I use very frequently when it comes to memorizing. So, you know, for history, that's a lot for you to memorize, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess it is better for you to involve more of, of your, I mean, more of your body parts. Like let's say we got, uh, you can use your hand, you can use your eyes, you can use your ears. So some of this, let's say we are watching video, we're going to involve our visual and our ears, right? Our our audition system. So that combination will bring some sort of uh, effectiveness to us. But for me, right, because I'm not like the hearing guy, my audition is very bad. <laughs> I ask people <laughs> to okay. you know, the kind of things. So at that, from that point, I understand that, you know, hear, listening is not something good for me. So eventually, right, I just take a book, Try to read it, and I actually I'm not sure, but uh, I I don't have I don't highlight my book. You see, just mm -hmm. a book, and then I when I read it, and then I automatically summarize what is the main point about this thing. That's a whole passage of things. Eventually, I can sum summarize that whole thing into three things. So yeah, 
then it's quite important when it comes to the sejara because they just meet your main point, right? Mm. And then also after I memorize, I just write down all the things so that you know you use your hand, you can use your brain as well to write down. But that I know a lot of people will do the same. But mm. the problem comes when you for, start to forget things. You see, you say, let's say yesterday you are reading what uh tarik medika tanaman layu, and then the next day you forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is quite common to many people so it just it is very important for you to recall all the things that you have learned at least one month after you learn it so that like you know when you start to recall it, it will be like an e- uh, easier task for you but other than that right um depends on your course but for a levels for me right now right i have to spam all the past papers because a level is 100 percent paper based then mm-hmm. you probably need to like you know uh keep doing the past paper because after all you study so much exam is the whole point right if you feel it then that's it you don't have an alternative for you so you have to get use of that question and then you have to know how to apply your knowledge into these questions mm-hmm. so this um are quite important but after all uh i've said so many i've said like you know um doing exam papers um make sure uh, some memorizing techniques it is quite important for you to maintain motivation as you said earlier in our podcast and this is very very important like i said i said the junior just now right i, yeah. I can see me something it's like you know um what i don't understand why people are so chilling right now i realized that i don't even have the time to like re- revise all the subjects that i learned i was like huh everyone has a, has a time right yeah. i mean everyone is normal everyone can do that why you are the only one who is facing problem with time so mm-hmm. the one that is not normal is you <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> but i didn't tell him that that's quite rude i didn't tell him that i just say like you know maybe you need to apply a more effective uh, study method some people they don't study that a lot in fact they don't study that like one or two hours some of the scholars right here they are top students of, of their school and uh, in fact i'm not like i'm just like what top 10 i'm not even top one <laughs> yeah <laughs> nah, but, don't be so humble <laughs> Some of the students here, they, you know, I don't see them study 24-7. You know, like, let's say we finish our, you know, like, our class at 4 p.m. And then you can see these people, these top students, huh? not me, these top mm. students. Huh? They go, after 4 o'clock, they go back, they play some sports until 6 p.m., then they bath, and then they sleep until 7 p.m., go to dinner, and only study at night. So this is the timetable, the uh, typical timetable of a KRI student here. So I wish... Um, all this element that I mentioned here, all the ones who are listening right now, you can like, you know, sort of referring how how top students actually studies here. Hmm. Yeah, true. Uh, one factor about um, studying techniques is that I can recall about my past techniques. So actually, when the moment when you mentioned about they don't have enough time to study, the reason behind it is just that they chose to not have time to study. Yeah, it's like a personal choice. Like for me myself, I also don't study 24-7. Like Mm -hmm. even like my maximum time to study on a daily basis is always only like minimum two hours and a maximum of four hours. And that's it. That's normal. normal. Yeah, that's normal. And then Mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, I'll okay the rest of my time joining clubs and activities or even playing games, watch movies, watch anime, mm. stuff like that. Yeah. So time management is one thing. I did mention time management is important in my first episode, but I did not really deeply relate it to study techniques and here I am. So uh, mm. in terms of loca- locating time efficiently, that is one thing. And also the active recall. I think I can summarize this in one single phrase, which is active recall. That is pretty useful as well. Mm -hmm. Because the more you recall back what you've learned, the more clearer the picture you will have in your mind in terms of any concept you learn. It's more efficient than just dumping all of your time to revise and restudy that one single chapter like a week before your exam or something like that. Mm, yeah, it refreshes yeah. your memory every single time. So that is one thing as well. Well, all in all, I think the key takeaway of having effective study techniques is that um, other study techniques may not work for 
may not work the same for everyone. So it's important to find a suitable method that suits your own capabilities and circumstances. That is the most, I would say, the most useful advice I can give in terms of study techniques. It's always important to find a suitable environment, a suitable method to make you maximize your efforts and your productivity in studying. That's what I can say. So, yeah, anything that is shared from Sujin, it's technically really helpful, and I really enjoyed our conversation here. So, <laughs> I think that is all for this episode. So, if you have any opinions to share, feel free to uh, leave a comment here on YouTube. And if you like this podcast, do share it to your friends and family on Spotify. All right, so we'll see you in the next episode. Peace out. Bye bye. Thank you, Sujin. All right, thank you for having me. Bye bye.